is a temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is a temple, and Jesus is within it. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Keep it tidy, keep it clean. Comb your hair, ooh la la. Make it sparkle, make it clean. Brush your teeth. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna eat my vegetables before I get dessert so I can grow up big and strong. to church today. My name is Miss Benita and today we're going to be talking about God's creation. That's the creation of man. But before we start, I would like us to say our identity. Let's go. I am wonderfully made. I am fearfully made. I know my identity. I am a child of God. I am creative and full of ideas. I am not a slave to fear. I am bold. I am a soldier in the Lord's army. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Well done, everyone. So let's dive into our story for today. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. Adam was male and Eve was female. You can see this in the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 5 to 6. You can study that on your own later. So God made men and women in his image and likeness. What that simply means is that God made all of us like him. Adam was made a man and Eve was made a woman. They were different. The man and the woman were created to be each other's companies or companions. So what that means is for them to be each other's friends, for them to be together. They were created to rule over everything that God had created and to also multiply, that's to have children. They were both naked but not ashamed and they lived peacefully in the garden of Eden. Hmm, let's see what happened next. The first scene. One day, Eve was taking a walk in the garden and the devil came in the form of a snake, a serpent, and gave her a fruit from the forbidden tree that God had already warned them not to eat from. Hmm, that's so sad. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the forbidden tree, they sinned against God because they disobeyed. God had told them not to eat from that tree. And after they ate from the tree, they already disobeyed God and it was sinful. Then their eyes were opened and they now both knew that they were naked because they no longer had God's 
covering. God made them clothes from animal skin to cover their body and protect their private parts. Yes, of course, God was very angry with them when he called out to Adam and Adam was hiding from God. God was like, ah, what's going on? Adam now screamed to God and said, I am naked. And God was, God was wondering, how did you get to know you were naked? Did you eat from the tree I asked you not to eat? And Adam said to God, it was Eve who gave me and I ate. Hmm. Even though God was angry, he still made them clothes to cover their body and their private parts. After that, he sent them out of the garden of Eden to begin to fend for themselves. The word fend means to begin to provide for themselves. Before, God gave them everything that made them comfortable, like the garden. Everything they needed was in the garden. They didn't need to go till the ground to get food, to plant and get food. But now, as God sent them away from the garden, they had to now start walking to get their own food to fend for themselves. Hmm. Why did God make clothes for them? He made clothes as a covering for them. He did this because our bodies are his temple. Our bodies are the temple of the most high God. So it simply means we're not meant to be naked. As children of God, we should cover our bodies. He made clothes for them because we are to protect our bodies by dressing well and covering our private part so that no one can see them, play with them, or even touch them inappropriately. Now we are going to learn the parts of our body that are public parts. I know you know some of them already. So we have our hair, our eyes, our nose, our ears, hands, and legs. So our public parts are the parts of our bodies that people can see. Now, what are the private parts? Hmm. Our private parts are the parts of our body that no one can see, touch, and feel. They include our thigh, our lips. Even though people can see our lips, they are not meant to kiss us on our lips, right? Our breast, our buttocks, for the boys, the penis. And for the girls, the vagina, those are your private parts. You're not meant to let anyone touch them, see them, or feel them. How do you protect your private parts? Hmm. Or how do you protect your body? We protect our bodies by wearing clothes that cover our private parts. You remember when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, right? From the forbidden tree, God covered them. God covered them up because they were naked. God covered their private parts. So just the way God covered them, God also wants us to cover ourselves. Another way to protect our body is by not allowing anyone touch your private part. People like our uncles, our aunties, our nannies, and even friends. What we should do if someone tries to touch our private part, we should yell until the person stops. Shout! Don't touch me there! Don't touch me there! Continue to shout until the person stops. And if someone touches your private part, what do you do? You report to your teachers, your parents, or responsible adults. Now, let's talk about the enemies of our bodies. Now, the Bible says, cleanliness is the next thing to godliness. So if we really want to be close to God, we have to keep our bodies clean. So bad hygiene is an enemy of our body. You can't wear your clothes that you've sweated upon two times. Yes. You can't, when you have your bath, you use soap, water, and sponge. You scrub. You scrub your body and rinse off with water so you maintain a good hygiene. 
another enemy of our body is sickness. And how does sickness creep in? Sometimes, some sickness comes as a result of bad hygiene. Yes. When germs get into your stomach and they start partying in your stomach, you get sick. So, we should cut our nails clean and ensure we don't put dirty things in our mouths. Another way we can protect our body is not to use sharp objects on our bodies. We shouldn't expose our bodies to cold and even disobedience. Disobedience is an enemy of our body. Okay, let's talk about the enemies of our private parts. Hmm, have you heard of, have you ever heard about the word predators? Predators are bad people who seek out or look out for other people to use, control, or harm them somehow. Take, for instance, a lion who looks for another animal to eat is a predator and the animal that the lion wants to eat up is a prey. So predators can be small, short, big, or tall. Predators can be someone or people you know or someone you don't even know. A predator can be your friend, your uncle, your auntie, your nanny, your driver, security guard, or gardener. So be careful. How do we identify a predator? Hmm. Let's see. So anyone who shows you bad movies, movies that are not appropriate for your age, is a predator. Anyone who tries to remove your pants or boxes when you are alone is a predator. Anyone will ask to touch your private part. Mm, remember we talked about our private part, right? That there are the parts no one should touch, see, or feel. So anyone who asks to touch your private part is a predator. Anyone who locks the door and wants you to be alone together is a predator. Anyone who wants you to come to a dark place. Hmm. Anyone who wants to give you what you should not show to your parents. Hmm. Anyone who tries to touch your private part. Anyone who tries to kiss you on your lips. And anyone who wants you to kiss their private part. All of these qualities, if you see them in a person, you know they are predators. So you run, run, run away from them. Okay, so there's a short song we're going to learn. Are you ready, friends? Okay, and it goes like this. My body is my friend and the house that I live. It has two different parts called the private and public. I will do just anything to protect my body because I love my body. And my body loves me. I'm sure the song was short and simple, right? So let's take it one more time. Now we're going to take it slowly. My body is my friend and the house that I live. It has two different parts called the private and public. I will do just everything. To protect my body, cause I love my body, and my body loves me. Well done, everyone. Now we move on to the conclusion and questions. I'm sure you've been listening attentively, so you should be able to answer the questions. Now you're going to fill in the missing words. Question number one. God made men and women in his dash and dash. Adam is a dash and Eve is a dash. How many parts make up your body? 
we are to cover our body and protect our dash parts. Our bodies are the dash of the Most High God. We are to protect our bodies by dash well and covering our dash parts. How do you protect your body? How do you identify a predator? Well done, guys. Our memory verse for today is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Can we say that together? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. And it says, You should know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit that you received from God and that he lives in you. You don't own yourselves. God paid a very high price to make you his. So honor God with your body. Let's take that again. You should know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit that you received from God and that he lives in you. You don't own yourselves. God paid a very high price to make you his. So honor God with your body. We've come to the end of today's lesson and I hope you learned something. Have a lovely week, everyone. Stories of the Bible. Adam and Eve sin. This is Adam. Hey. And this is Eve. Hey. Who were the first people on earth they lived in the Garden of Eden, which was a beautiful place that had everything they needed. Adam and Eve took care of the animals and could eat from any of the trees in the garden, except for one. This was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and God told them not to eat from this tree. There were lots of animals in the garden, but the serpent was the most clever of all the wild animals God had made. Hmm. One day, he asked the woman, Hey, Eve! Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of these trees in the garden? <laughs> no! Eve said that they were able to eat from all of the fruit trees except the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. For God said, You must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. No, that can't be. You won't die, said the serpent. God knows that as soon as you eat it, you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. <gasps> oh. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to Adam, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened. Oh, no! And they suddenly realized they weren't wearing clothes and were embarrassed. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, Adam and Eve heard God walking about in the garden. Hi! So they hid from God among the trees. Then God called to Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? Adam said, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then God asked Eve, What have you done? The serpent tricked me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then God punished the serpent by making it so he would crawl on his belly from then on. He told Eve that she would have great pain in her life. Then God said to Adam that because he listened to Eve and did not obey what God had told him to do, his life would be very difficult. He would have to work hard to get food to eat, God said, for you were made from dust and to dust you will return. 
Then God made them clothing from the animals. But God knew that Adam and Eve could no longer live in the garden because of their sin. So he sent them away and closed up the garden.